Hi friends and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to secure an endotracheal tube in neonatal patients using a needle bar. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse. I've worked with a lot of patient populations in my time as a nurse, but by far my favorite population to work with are the preemies and the NICU. If you missed the video right before this one, I would recommend you starting there and I'll link that video for you in the description below. But in the previous video, we talked about several ways of verifying ET tube placement once your patient is intubated. So after you know that your patient has been successfully intubated, you need to secure the tube to the patient so it doesn't become dislodged. One of the ways you can do that is by using a Neobar. If you're not familiar with Neobars, they are a really great device used in neonatal patients to secure ET tubes. Here's what they look like. They come in a variety of sizes and they have two tabs that will secure close to the patient's ears and a little platform here that the ET tube will rest on. This is great because it allows the ET tube to come straight out of your neonatal patient's mouth and it prevents any sort of pressure injury or skin breakdown from the tube being taped anywhere directly around the patient's mouth. To select the appropriate size Neobar for your patient, you'll need to use the measuring tape that comes with each Neobar. There are two main steps when applying a Neobar. The first is the preparation you'll need to do, and the second is actually applying the Neobar. For the preparation phase, you will first need to select the appropriate size Neobar using the tape measure that comes with each Neobar. To do this, you'll follow the guide on the tape measure itself and place the tape measure at the patient's septum right underneath their nose all the way to the patient's ear canal. The appropriate size Neobar for that patient is the color that falls over the patient's ear canal. This color will correspond with the Neobar size of the same color. Once you've selected the appropriate size Neobar, you will then do a quick trial run on your patient with the Neobar to make sure it's an appropriate size on the patient's face. After you've done your test fit with the Neobar, you'll then need to prep your patient's skin. This is especially important if you are placing a Neobar on a patient in a resuscitation after delivery. There's a lot of moisture on the skin that you'll need to remove to make sure you have an appropriate adhesion of the Neobar. To clean the skin, typically sterile water on a two by two works well. You'll also want to make sure that you are drying the skin. It is incredibly important that you not use an alcohol swab to prep your patient's skin. This can be incredibly drying to their skin and very irritating. Another part of the preparation phase is to prepare the tape that you're going to use to secure the ET tube to the Neobar platform itself. Typically a half inch cloth white tape does just fine for this. You'll need no more than four to five inches, but it's important that when you cut your tape, you also include what I like to call courtesy tabs. And courtesy tabs are a safety feature. You'll do this on each end of the tape. It's really simple. All that you'll do is fold over some of the tape sticky side together onto itself. This allows you to have a little tab that you can grab if you need to remove the tape quickly or in an emergency situation. It's much faster and safer to have your tape like this where again, you can pull the tab easily instead of trying to find where the tape ends. So as you're preparing the tape that you'll use, go ahead and put two courtesy tabs on the um, ends of the piece of tape and have that ready to go to tape your tube. After you have finished this preparation phase, you are now ready to apply the Neobar. And to do that, you will need to start with activating the adhesive on the tabs of the Neobar. You can do this several ways. You can either hold the tabs in your hands to warm for about 60 seconds, or you can wrap a heel warmer around the tabs or hold the tab up underneath the radiant warmer for about 15 seconds. After your tabs are warm, I find it easiest to wrap the tape that you're going to use around the platform of the Neobar once. This is so much easier than applying the Neobar and then wrapping the tape around once while you're trying to manage the ET tube. So I wrap the tape around one time and then apply the Neobar to the patient. To apply the Neobar to the patient, you will peel the liner on the tabs, center the Neobar appropriately on the patient's face, and you will hold the tabs down for 60 seconds to make sure that they've adhered to the patient's skin. After you've held these tabs in place for 60 seconds and you know that your Neobar bar is secured firmly to the patient's face, you can then take your ET tube and put it on the underside of the platform. 
It's important to tape the ET tube to the underside of the platform of the patient's mouth to prevent any sort of pressure point in the patient's mouth. This also makes it a lot easier to advance the tube or pull back the tube a little bit when you're confirming its depth with an x-ray. After you've wrapped the tape around the tube and the Neobar platform one time, typically everyone will remove their hands to see how much play is in the Neobar. Sometimes you're holding the, the tube so firmly that the Neobar can be putting quite a bit of pressure on the patient's lips. Conversely, the Neobar could be far too out and that could be putting unnecessary outward tension on your tube. If all looks well when you've removed any sort of holding or pressure on the Neobar, you can then proceed to taping the tube the rest of the way. Typically, this is done in a candy cane fashion of the ET tube. To remove the Neobar, you have several options. The first would be in a very controlled setting where you can use adhesive remover on the tabs of the Neobar and remove the Neobar and attached ET tube. The second option is in an emergency situation. Under these circumstances, you can use blunt scissors to cut the Neobar at the junction of the tab and the Neobar. You'll pull out the ET tube and the Neobar immediately, and you can go back at a later time and use adhesive remover on the tabs left behind. I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something. If it was, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel to not miss any nursing content from me in the future.